I'm Captain Sean McManus, and this is an AH-64 Delta Apache Longbow. All right, so this is the M230 30 millimeter chain gun area weapon system. It fires a 30 millimeter high explosive dual purpose round that's both armor penetrating and fragmentary uh, for anti-personnel and vehicles. It has a range of 4,200 meters is its ballistic range. Uh, effective range 15 to 1,700 meters, but it's still really effective at 3,000. Uh, it fires at 625 rounds per minute. Um, and this gun will move um, in accordance with the way the pilot is looking or where the sights are looking. It can move up to 86 degrees left or right, 60 degrees down, uh, and it can deflect upwards as well up to 11 degrees. And that allows us to engage targets in any direction, whether the aircraft is facing them or not, uh, moving or stationary. So this is the TADS, it's the Target Acquisition and Designation System. This is the eyes of our aircraft. Um, this is what all the, the pilots are gonna be using to find the targets um, that are downrange. Uh, it has a FLIR, or forward-looking infrared camera, as well as a day television camera, and a laser, laser range finder designator. Um, with this system, we can find the target, we can find how far away it is, uh, and then use this to engage the targets accurately with all the weapon systems. Additionally, up here, this bucket is the pilot night vision system, or PINVIS, and we use that to fly at night. It also has a forward-looking infrared system, and it, uh, it moves left and right and up and down, allowing the pilot to see uh, during the, the nighttime hours. It can be pitch black out, but they can still see uh, to be able to fly because of the heat that's coming off of those objects. Um, so that's what the forward-looking infrared does. It takes IR energy or heat energy and turns it into a visual, visual image that gets displayed on our eyepiece in the cockpit and allows us to see in pitch black conditions. All right, what we have here is the uh, 2.75 inch Hydra folding fin aerial rocket system. It can carry 19 rockets in this individual pod. Uh, we can carry up to four pods on the aircraft, one on each pylon for a total of 96 rockets. Um, each of these rockets can have a different type of warhead on them. We have several different types. There is high explosive warheads with a 10 or 17 pound high explosive. Uh, there is the flechette. They can carry 1100 uh, 60 grain stainless steel flechettes. They're basically nails, like the kind of large contracting nails that you put to hammer a, a, a house together. Uh, it'll fire all those in midair and they'll release and they'll impact the ground uh, covering a, an area about 30 meters wide. Uh, they also have illumination rockets, so we can fire a rocket. Uh, it'll go up into the air, um, release a, a flare that uh, provides a very bright illumination that covers uh, one kilometer square, and, and really it'll be like daylight out for whoever's on the ground, it allows people on the ground to see better. Uh, and then we have another warhead, which is called a multi-purpose submunition, which we don't really use much anymore, but uh, it is something that we have available and it shoots uh, the rocket off, uh, releases nine submunitions which float down on parachutes, and each of those submunitions has an explosive charge uh, which can penetrate armor, uh, but it also has a fragmentary blast as well for personnel. Uh, the next weapon system is uh, the Hellfire Missile Launcher. Uh, this currently doesn't have any missiles on it, but it would carry up to four AGM-114 missiles. Uh, those missiles could have two different types of seekers. There's the uh, semi-active laser seeker, which basically follows laser energy. Like if you had a laser pointer, it's like your cat. It wants to follow it. So you just point that laser at what you want it to hit and it will find that laser spot and hit the target. The other type is gonna be an RF missile or radio frequency missile. And it does the same thing except with invisible radio waves. Uh, so those radio waves, come off of a radio disc that's on the top of some of our aircraft, uh, and it bounces off of those objects that uh, are the target, and those radio waves, once they bounce off, kind of like an echo, this missile will hone in on that echo of the radio waves and find the target. Um, and they are, they're very, very good weapon systems. Uh, they can destroy a large armored vehicles. All right, so here we have the main power plant for the A64 Apache. 
There's one on each side. It's a 701D engine. Um, so these engines are jet engines. They take air in through the air intake. Uh, there's a compressor, and then that compressed air goes into a combustion se section, explodes and drives some more turbine blades. That power comes from those turbine blades through a drive shaft in the center and comes to what this uh, is, which is the nose gearbox. That turns the, uh, the shaft power 90 degrees to another drive shaft, which goes into the transmission, which is in the center here behind me, and that drives the main rotor head as well as the tail rotor through a series of drive shafts that goes through the tail. All right, so I'm sitting in the pilot station right now. It's the back seat of the Apache helicopter. Uh, you can fly from both seats, either the front or the back, but primarily the person in the back is the person flying the aircraft, and the person in the front seat is generally operating the sights and the weapon systems for the aircraft. Uh, you can also shoot the weapon systems from both seats, um, but you have a better accuracy from the front seat, generally. Uh, you also have the control systems up here. So this is the cyclic, um, and generally it causes you to move the aircraft left or right, up, down, forward, or back. Uh, the collective, which is over here to my left side, is uh, a, another handle where you pull up and down, uh, and that will allow you to increase the power of the aircraft. Um, and that allows you to go faster or go up in the air or down in the air, depending. Uh, and then my feet, we have the anti the torque pedals. And they work uh, kind of like this, uh, where if I push on my right foot, the left foot goes back. And if I push on the left foot, the right foot goes back. And what that controls is the tail rotor. It controls the pitch of the blades on the tail rotor. And that allows us to main the aircraft, maintain the aircraft in trim. Uh, while we're flying, but also while we're hovering, it allows us to pivot around the main rotor head uh, 360 degrees, so we can turn like a top if we need to rapidly change direction. Uh, we have several gauges and screens in here, many switches. Um, we have five radios that we talk on at any one time. Um, and, and with these gauges and screens, that gives us our flight information, um, systems information, information about the engines, uh, how the aircraft is operating, how the weapon systems are operating. Um, so it's really just a, a very large flying computer and you have to be, uh, be able to multitask fairly well to be able to talk on the radios, look at the screens, fly the aircraft, coordinate with your crew member and perform the mission at hand. So this is part of our heads up display system. Uh, this is what displays the information onto a, a piece of glass as you see here. And that piece of glass will go in front of our eye. So, this component uh, actually clips onto our helmet, which I'll do real quick so you can see. All right, so it clips on right there and it goes over our right eye, as you can see, just like that. And on this glass will be presented all of the flight information, uh, information about the weapon systems, information about the navigation systems, what heading we are, what attitude the aircraft's in, where our co-pilot's looking, or where the sights are looking. Uh, it also gives us our night vision system uh, information. So if you remember me talking about the pilot night vision system on the nose of the aircraft, that FLIR camera will display the image it's seeing on this piece of glass. So wherever we look and turn our head, that camera will move because there are sensors uh, to my rear that detect where my helmet is looking. And uh, if I look off to the right, that camera will look off to the right, show the image on the screen, and then I can see what that FLIR camera is showing me. So I can fly, like I said, in a pitch black uh, night with no moon, no stars, cloud cover. I can still see just as good as I could during the day. Uh, another thing that this uh, will do is uh, it, the, the center of the line of sight that is projected on my eye uh, shows me where the gun is pointing if I select the gun. So like I said before, the sensors behind my head will detect where my head is looking. And if I look off to the right, and uh, find a, a vehicle over there. The gun will be pointed at that vehicle and all I have to do is select, uh, um, pull the trigger and I'll be able to engage that target very rapidly. Uh, and then bring my head back, find other targets and continue to engage. So the uh, main rotor system here, um, it, it is what drives the aircraft forward, backwards, left, right, up and down. Uh, a lot of people have the misconception that helicopters change their, 
their position up and down by increasing the speed at which the main rotors are turning, but that's not actually how it works. The, uh, the way it works is that this rotor system is moving the same speed the entire time that we're flying, uh, but these blades, they will move. So when we want to go up, when we pull up on the collective, each one of these blades will pitch in the same attitude. Uh, they'll change the angle of attack together and that creates more lift and the aircraft will climb. And when we want to descend, we lower the collective and the same thing, all the blades lower an angle of attack, creates less lift and the aircraft will descend. Um, same thing for when we want to move left, right, forward. You push the cyclic left, right, uh, and the blades will change individually, not all together this time, and that will cause the rotor discs to move and angle forward if we want to go forward or angle backwards if we want to go backwards. Left, right, same thing. Um, what a lot of people are curious about is the, the classic helicopter sound that you hear in all the movies. Uh, and that sound is actually caused by these blades spinning so fast that at the tip, they're close to the sound barrier. They're not breaking the sound barrier, but they're very, very close to it. Uh, and it causes a, uh, a pressure wave to be formed on the, the leading edge of the blade, and that causes that, that popping sound that everybody's so familiar with. All right, so the first thing you're gonna see here is the, the gentleman's going to attach what's called as a static line to the aircraft. And this is a safety precaution uh, because the fuel is flammable if they don't ground the aircraft properly uh, and connect it to a, a grounding source, a spark could cause the, the fuel to ignite. Uh, so they ground it by attaching those clips to a, a metal part of the aircraft and then attaching the second clip to a metal uh, pole that's stuck into the ground. Now he's taking the uh, fuel line. You'll see he's wearing goggles. Uh, that's because the fuel that goes in these aircraft is, is very dangerous for your eyes. If it splashes into your eyes, it can, it can definitely cause a lot of injuries, permanent blindness if it's not washed out. The hose goes into that single port refueling. Uh, it, it's gonna be pumped in at approximately 55 PSI and go to both the forward, aft, and center fuel tanks on this bird. Uh, the entire refueling process will only take about 10 to 15 minutes. My name is Captain Sean McManus. I am an Apache pilot as well as the company commander for the Assassins, Alpha Company, 1-3, Attack Reconnaissance Battalion, 12th Combat Aviation Brigade.